Hello, my most amazing artists. How are you today? Ready, jump, ready! Awesome, let's get started. The word of the week is color. Woo -woo. Color Woo -woo. is an element of art. We're going to be adding color Woo -woo -woo. to our pictures that we made last week. Color is the element of art that involves light. It is produced when light waves strike an object and are reflected into our eyes. It consists of three properties, hue, intensity, and value. Last week, we talked about artist Joseph Amadokpo, and we looked at his artworks and got to see how he used line and shape in his composition. Today, let's take another look at some of his artworks and try to see how he used color. As you notice, he used a wide range of colors in all of his artworks. I could actually see every color from the rainbow. Reds, oranges, yellows, greens, blues, and violets. What I want you to do is I want you to get your artwork that you made last week with your lines, shapes, you might have added some pattern, and uh, hopefully you were able to find a spot to put your name. I remember I used all pieces of my name to kind of fill the composition. You wanna get that out. And we're gonna talk about how we can add color to our artwork. Let's go take a look. When coloring your artworks, you may choose to use markers, color pencils, crayons, whatever you have. Here is a sample of some shapes that I want to show you some techniques for careful coloring. You can see here, I outline my shape first on the inside, and then using lines that go in the same direction, I fill in the negative space. Again, you can see I outline the shape and then using lines that go in the same direction, I am filling it in. I want to also remind you of a few colored pencil techniques. One way to really make the coloring look fantastic is to color in one direction and then color in the other direction. That will give you a nice, rich color. Sometimes you have to use a little bit more pressure, but when you color in that way, you will see less of the paper. It will cover more of the paper. So again, you see I'm using lines that go in one direction. And rather than just being done because it's colored right there, think about using lines that go in the opposite direction to make your color really pop. Actually, my colored pencil markings are so bold that it's hard to tell what is the marker and what is the colored pencil. Sometimes you might want to just color in the direction of the shape. As you can see here, I'm just coloring in circle lines all the way until I get to the center of the circle.
And again, I'm coloring one last shape with careful coloring. I'm using lines all in the same direction. And then I go back and fill in any of the negative spaces very lightly. And then I will go and use the opposite direction with my lines to fill in the space. Now you can see here I'm going very quickly, but I'm still using those same techniques that I showed you in the previous video. I am outlining areas and then filling them in, making sure my lines go in the same direction. It's always a good idea as well that, for instance, if you have the, let's say, uh, orange or yellow in your hand that you can go around and look at your paper and see where else do you want to add that color. So once you have it in your hand, you can kind of repeat the color here and there based on your design. I also went back in with a black Sharpie to uh, make a few more of my lines pop. And I also wanted to add a few more lines on the left hand side there. I thought that that space, um, needed a little bit more uh, design elements. So I added a couple more lines here and there uh, to finish out the piece. You will then see I decided to add some colored pencils as well. So I've used markers and colored pencils for this project as well as Sharpie, uh, which makes this a mixed media piece. Again, using those lines in one direction and then the opposite direction. Uh, it's actually hard to see what's color pencil and what is marker. I'm really using a lot of pressure on those pencils in order to get that rich bold color. Remember, when you are finished adding color to your artwork, you want to go ahead and go in the Google form and answer the questions for this week. When you're finished, if you'd like to show me what you're working on, as always, you can email me, you can share on social media, or you can try Flipgrid. I've added a link for you to try that as well. I am so excited with all of those uh, videos that you shared last week. They were so amazing. It is so exciting to be able to communicate with you on Flipgrid. Please make sure to check your email for a video response from me if you did not get that yet. Those of you who are finished early and who are looking for something to do, what I want you to do is I want you to get out your art journal and I am going to share with you my love for Zentangle. I don't know if you've ever heard of Zentangle before, but it really goes hand in hand with learning about line and shape and pattern. And it is, it is the most fun for me. And I know that you're going to love it as well. It really is a source for um, relaxation and inspiration. And I have a really uh, fun starting out kind of daily, um, or actually we can do this weekly activity with Zentangle. So be on the lookout for the weekly Zentangle uh, challenge, if you will. And we're gonna be doing that in your art journal. So if you're finished early and you're looking for something to do, uh, please click that video and follow along with me. Until next time, stay creative.